Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Nomen live stream. Uh, I'm your host today, Adam Hartel, and I want to welcome you guys to today's um, stream, which is going to be a conversation with visual effects supervisor and Nomen instructor, Martin Hall. Uh, we've got a great time in store. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to learn about um, not only about visual effects, but about what Martin's class is like at Nomen, as well as um, a lot of the adjacent interests and skill sets uh, that that people have who find themselves working in visual effects. This is intended to kind of be your one stop to learn about that, to learn about careers, um, and get a taste of uh, what it's like to be in the classroom at Nomen. Um, so just off the top, I wanted to say that anybody who is in need of closed captioning today, you will be able to find that service available on our Facebook live stream, which is going on right now. We're streaming concurrently on Facebook, YouTube, as well as Twitch. But if you're looking for closed captioning, if you head over to our Facebook page, you'll be able to find it there. Um, also joining me today in the chat is my colleague, uh, Xander, who is one of our fantastic ad uh, admissions advisors at Nomen. Um, he's helping to uh, run some of the technical aspects of today's stream, but he's gonna be in the chat available to answer questions about Nomen if you wanna get in touch with us as a school. And our admissions advisors are more like art coaches. So they're really the people you wanna get to know and wanna engage. Um, so with that, I would like to introduce our guest, uh, Martin Hall. Um, Martin is a two-time Emmy Award winner for visual effects. Uh, he comes from a fine arts and film filmmaking background. He's worked in Hollywood production and post-production for over 20 years and continues to evolve with storytelling technology. Most recently, Martin Hall is slated to the VFX supervisor for Netflix's uh, next Bird Box feature. He was VFX supervisor on HBO's The Untitled, Untitled Lakers Project and Perry Mason. Over 2020, he supervised Amazon's The Encounter and All the Old Knives. And just a few of Martin's many credits include Love, Death, and Robots, The Meg, Men in Black 2, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, Thor, and The Amazing Spider-Man, just to name a few. And his work has been featured in Cinefix Magazine. In addition to his artistry, Martin is an educator at Nomen and a member of the Visual Effects Society. So before uh, we bring uh, Martin into the stream to join us, I would like to share a really cool treat with you guys. And that is um, a visual effects breakdown of the work that Martin did for Love, Death, and Robots. So we're gonna roll that now for you. about you.
have a visual on you. Prep for evac. We'll touch down to your reef at zero. All right. Extremely cool. Uh, so with that, I would like to welcome Martin Hall to the stream. Uh, I'll bring your webcam up here. Hello, sir. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We're already getting a ton of love in the chat uh, for your work on that episode, uh, on that short, Love, Death, and Robots. And I got to say, uh, it's personally one of my favorite shorts from that series. Oh, yeah. You know, I think I, I hear that a lot, which I'm really happy about. It's uh, It was a blast to work on, as you guys can see and can imagine. I mean, it's really, it's everything an effects nerd's going to love, you know, Mercs. Uh, jump ships, lasers, anamorphic lens flares. I mean, it's it's sci-fi 101. So totally, it was, a blast. it was a blast to work on. Absolutely, and it sort of felt like it could exist a little bit inside, you know, the the James Cameron universe, you know, with uh, some of those features and stuff. And oh, I yeah, mean, absolutely. on its own, it could have been an incredibly visually compelling, just the visuals alone. But I think it's one of those really cool um convergences where you not only get amazing visuals and technology but the story yeah. was really good too Com compelling story very yeah. interesting sci-fi sci short and i mean it's really inspiring especially for us as as creators and the whole Noman crew and anyone who's exposed to our ecosystem of like wow you know i can tell a compelling short story you know obviously with time you know time and talent but you know, it's it's really good to see that format really blow up and kind of have its shot and its and see its uh, you know, see the light of day and really in a really uh, highlighted way. You know, it's it's so it's really uh, I think inspiring for us who have worked on shorter format uh, uh, media and tell stories in a in a more compact way, because uh, you know it's it's available to all of us now and this is oh, it's yeah. a really time to be a creator and an artist on this planet. You know, so absolutely, it's a, it's a it's it's amazing times. I think it's the best time in in history so far to be alive and be an artist. And um, you bring up you're making a really excellent point too, because I think a lot of times people from more traditional arts backgrounds, whether they're drawing and painting um, or right. they're doing more traditional animation, they tend to think of like VFX as like, oh, that's super super technical kind of stuff, and it can be. But um, looking at something like this, you remember just how much art and creativity is in yeah. that medium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was. I mean, there all the work, things I worked on, whether it's television or or um, or feature or feature films or music videos or whatever it is, they all have their different arc. They all have their different focus. This is a very interesting project in that it was um, largely driven by artists. I mean, you know, the in-house director was the uh, senior visual effects supervisor for uh, for uh, Sony Imageworks. So mm. it was one of the strangest, most awesome experience where really us artists were bouncing ideas off each other. It's like, what do you guys think? And much more of a, in in, in other projects, it's very much more a, a, a top down, a, a studio's directive, a, you know, a producer, a, dra a director is really driving the, the ball, but there has a lot of, uh, there was a, a lot of back and forth and just like pitching ideas, like you would any collaborative artist uh, session. So, and realistically it was actually, you know, you uh, David Fincher and uh, and Tim Miller were uh, you know creative executive producers. It was great because it was just like you know what would they dig you know what would they mm -hmm. respond well to as well as ourselves. So it was very much a it was like one of the you know more uh, artist driven collaborative efforts ever. So you really you know it's it, it's always ideally that with people coming together with their strongest um, you know strengths and bringing that uh, to the to a director's vision. But not, in this case, it felt a lot more like. It was us really, you know, com you know, really just pitching ideas and like, and mm. it wasn't, it wasn't very little ego, and it was just like, yeah, that's I like that, that works, or this this could work better, and it was it was great. I was so you know so very um, very awesome experience. Yeah, and, and very you know, sci-fi and very kind of retro, and of course, yeah. it, 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 as you mentioned, a really compelling story. And that's so cool too, because I think you can really tell when. Um, the the make the artist making the asset or making the animation or whatever it is they're really nerding out on what they're making or maybe there's a little bit of themselves in it like they got to run with an idea that they had it just comes across i think in the production um yep. so before we get into i think to talking specifically about visual effects and you know uh 
interests related to that and how people can get into that and talking about your class at Noman. Um, right. I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, your own artistic journey and right. um, a little bit of, you know, what your industry journey has been. Cause I know that, I know that you've, you've got, you've spanned quite a bit of the, the entertainment industry uh, timeframe. Yeah. yeah the, uh, read into it that I'm old, uh, but no, <laughs> I've been in, the, I've been in this, I've been doing it for quite a long time and I, mm -hmm. and, you know, my, my passion is that, and you know, I am of that ilk of, you know, gen one star Wars. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and watching films and going, Oh my God, I would love to do that someday, you know, yeah. uh, in, in the late seventies, you know, when, it, when this thing exploded on screen, you're like, that's stellar, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, and then the next question becomes as, you know, someone who is creative and someone who's drawn towards, uh, you know, creative drawing, painting and sculpting is like, that's amazing but how would i ever get there you know that's that's mm. the question and, and you really are like lost of like i'm not quite sure but i'm gonna pursue my artistic passions and i hope that somehow magnetism and all the powers come to be and i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna lock into that you know ultimate goal yeah. and it was one of these one of these journeys where i started as a fine artist you know i'm all you know i come from a family of artists and it was like okay well you're gonna be an artist cool you're going to have to support yourself. So make sure you get a, a, a master's degree and you're like, all right, okay, fine. You know, I'll, I'll cover my bases and just in case I can't you know, support myself, you know, but realistically it was always like, that's cool. But you know, painting is great. I, I really love this whole filmmaking process. I love this media. And even as a creative artist, I felt myself drawing more and more towards like, you know, video installations and more editorial and, 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 you know, critiques and, and, and focuses on, you know, media and how that plays with uh, the artistry and that whole back and forth. And like, you know, and then like, you know, and coming from Northern California, seeing like this, you know, uh, you know, a vision of like, oh, well, these, these things are being made, these things, these films are being made and like animation, I, I love animation. How could I do that? You know, all these little things, and of course, I, I kind of, you know, I guess I'm, I consider myself lucky, but I, I'm, I'm from that analog you know, state of like mm -hmm. digital, sure, late 90s, we're experimenting with this brand new technology and, and like myself, I'm like, okay, well, that's amazing. I don't know how I get, we'll get there, but I'm going to go to film school. So I kind of started in that whole realm of film school. And again, and it's funny because I don't, and I think many NOMA students coming into it, maybe we'll share the same mindset of like, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to go, but I love everything I'm exposed to. Mm -hmm. and, Everything I would just absorb and say, lighting, editorial, you know, production design, you know, all this stuff is just like, it's all amazing. It's all creative. It's technical. It's creative. And I think like that ultimate future of where we are with technology now, you know, where it is very technical, but it, but again, it's it, that doesn't really matter. It's, it's really the artist driving the ball. You know, it's like yeah, the, all, the, all the the medium can be like old school film, you know, editorial or lighting. Or it can be, you know, it can be a digital medium like we are now, where it really and, and now it's all also coming back together in one strange cohesive fuse, where mm -hmm. it's it's you know LED technology and, and virtual production is like wow, it's like it's kind of coming all full circle and kind of mend, you know, melding into one you know creative cool new hole. So it's a very a very interesting, very awesome time to be you know creating a, a, on this planet. So it's a it, it is a fun time. It's absolutely yeah. Great. Yeah. And you, you brought up virtual production and, you know, it's, it definitely has become like this, uh, a buzzword for good reason. Everybody's talking about digital production. And I think the really cool thing, like you said, is that it, at the end of the day, you know, virtual production is incorporating a lot of the games pipeline because you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're working with game engines like unreal. Right. Um, but then it's bringing in all of this foundational, like, blocking for film, you know, understanding camera movement, all right. of those lighting, because now the the digital sky you're generating is actually giving you your stage lighting. Um, right. So it's it just blows my mind. Um, and I think uh, you also brought up another really good point, and that is, um, and we'll get into this, we talk about your class at Noman, but at Noman, um, it can be a little daunting because sometimes people feel like, well, but I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet. I just love it all. And the yeah. way that we structure our programs at Noman do not require you to know that up front. We give everything right. to you so you can make your choices as you go in. Um, right. But I've got to believe that it's fun for you in your class when you see 
those students come through and the ones that are like really come alive <laughs> to what you're teaching yeah. and they're like this is my thing yeah no absolutely absolutely i mean you know obviously you know it's we're, we're well known as a, a very 3d centric um you know push in our in our artistry and in our, in our nomen track and you know compositing has a, a huge part to play in that but mm -hmm. it's funny because there's people who are very talented some students who are very talented in 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 modeling it and look development and stuff and you know compositing is a, a, a um, an interesting hybrid where it's 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 the final you know melding of all of everything coming together whether it's live action footage or just even like we saw with lucky 13 just complete lighting and and final comp look you mm -hmm. know it, but it is like you know it, it is kind of multi multidisciplinary where like if you're into photography, if you like cinematography, like if you've light, you know, light on set, you know, all mm -hmm. these disciplines are co completely cohesive and completely part of the are the part of the mix. And like lens choice, and what does what does that have to say about storytelling? And it, and you know, it is totally. all a, a strong visual medium, and just fo focusing on like again, uh, you know, if I couldn't say any words, how would I tell a story with visuals? And I think that's an, always an interesting, you know, exercise and an interesting way to think about like, you know, storytelling and, and what, mm -hmm. what how, how far you could push it, even like to, you know, people who you can't speak the language with and you can share this, you know, greater cohesive thought and art and, and people will get it, you know, just based yeah. on your imagery. But it's, it's all these pieces of the storytelling, you know, technique to, to bring everything together so it yeah. is great you know and, and and like you said you know it's a very interesting time because we're coming back together and things that were like oh yeah you know old, you know old school technology like rear screen projection yeah you know, but i think it, it all come but it's all again like this part of this interesting story pro telling process where you know you you have to determine and figure out a little bit more up up in front what you want to what you want to execute so it's a little bit more interesting in that you know it's more production centric it's more immediate of like you know focusing on what you want to do i've been lucky to kind of work on a couple projects we did perry mason we did a big uh, a giant you know stage five and paramount giant uh uh rear you know uh, led um projection and oh they they you know, used that in perry mason i didn't know that that's awesome yeah i mean right uh you know, right on the tail right in that whole nexus of going into like oh this is gonna suck with uh with you know the obviously COVID uh ailments that we we're kind of dealing with but we yeah we did a, a giant solution and really is to you know coming to it from a compositing standpoint you looking at a you know we did a um a biplane and you see like glass and reflection refraction you see all that stuff and you're calculating your head like this this is a lot of work in the comp world and seeing it live and and executing it mm -hmm. on screen and having that feedback with directors directors of photographies um and even artistic talent is fantastic because you know it's a it's much more immediate and you're able to talk about these these ideas um real time and it's it's just great you know it's just like yeah it's certainly going to have its its strong point. It's going to you know, it's going to be another tool for us to tell stories. It's not going to be the the end all be all. So you know you know, don't worry about, oh, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, it's going to narrow into one certain focus. I mean, I'm hearing from every vendor and from every, uh, uh, you know, the largest visual effects companies from around the world. And the, the, they're still screaming, we don't have enough compositors, you know, bring, oh, yeah. us, bring us more compositors. I mean, yeah. and, and it realistically, it's like, it's just because, you know, a good artist is, is really hard to find. It's someone who can, you know, have a good vision, have a, a sense of what looks right, what works well. I mean, I had, I literally had a conversation this morning of like, I, the same thing. I, we need somebody who's really good at it, uh, uh, the, the, the nature of, of a good compositor. So it is a great skill set. You know, Noman has been l lucky and blessed. And I, I'm, I feel thrilled because of, you know, been a part of that process to have mm -hmm. some really talented art artists come through and the and kind of lean towards compositing and kind of work at you know little places like Weta or ILM you know so it's uh, you know it's it's great and that really speaks to you know the the artistry and of course you know what Noman has to offer yeah I, and I think you know I'm just about everybody these days is somewhat familiar with what the idea of compositing is I mean we're constantly even doing it in a rudimentary yeah. form on our Zoom calls, you know, during social distancing and that kind of stuff. But could you, for for sort of the layman or the person who's not as familiar with the VFX pipeline, um, could you break down in layman's terms uh, essentially what a compositor does? 
uh, on a project? No, no I think it, it, you know, and, you know, I think we, it's good to always step back and say, you know, unlearn what you already know, because I think, and I, I, I was really shocked to, to hear students at other educational places saying like, I never even knew what a compositor was the whole, mm. the whole idea, what it, what it was. I'm like, you know, kind of shocking, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there, I guess there is that because our, you know, our, our piece of that puzzle is really, I mean, it can be multiple things, but it's in a lot of sense, it's kind of bringing everything together as one cohesive whole for the pr final presentation. Right. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the biggest broad way to s describe it, but it can be, you know, a live act, you know, let's just say it's a Jurassic Park dinosaur and you're you're putting a, a, a digitally created dinosaur into a, a live action play, you know, uh, how how would that look in terms of lighting and shadow and color and contrast and sharpness and like all those little you know, parameters and pieces of the puzzle? I mean, you know, integrate it as though it was literally shot that way, you know, mm -hmm. so we painstakingly stress all the details of Photograph, photographic naturalism, you know, the mechanics of lenses and distortions and warps and aberrations and, and all that. Um, so to make it really feel like it was shot that way, um, ultimately yeah. it would be that. But it doesn't necessarily need to be that. It could also completely be, and it really also, it is a bit multidisciplinary as well. Like, I mean, you, I work obviously with a lot of animators at Noman, and it's just like, you know, I, I get that skill set. I I've done traditional old school cell animation in the past. I've done a little mm -hmm. bit of digital, uh, you know, CG animation as well. There are times where we have to have a sense of animation of like taking things to, uh, taking things apart and reanimating to make it feel like a, a real new reality. And it's like, yeah. you know, so you're relying upon those different skill sets. So it's not just like I'm putting things together as a 2D object. It's like, okay, totally. that's a very simple thing, but it can be, it can be animation. It can be uh, blocking lighting and, and and color. You know, design. Uh, it can be cinematography. You know, mm -hmm. you know, rebuild a new shot and what would that look like? You know, I want to take totally. this shot. I want it to to feel like real cinema ca camera shake. How does that look? How how does that play? And I think some you know some of the most valuable things that we can do as compositors or even bigger picture artists is look at reality or look at the world around us. You know, there's obviously being inspired by media and film, but even just nature and how things look, how things feel, how things move, how things are lit, <clears throat> color and light and shadow, how that all plays. And so like, you know, many of my, uh, my peers will, will nerd out or, you know, post things back and forth and saying like, that cloud is not right. There's something wrong with that cloud. You know, <laughs> we have notes for that cloud. It looks like a, a, a weird error, you know, and, and it is, I mean, you'll look at things in reality and like that doesn't feel right or that feels perfect or, or whatever it is. But I think it is really honing in on, you know, what naturalism, what real last real realism looks like. And again, on the other end of this uh, of the spectrum, it can completely be something different where it's about fantastic fantasy and creating yeah. a new, a new, uh, Un, never before seen fantasy. So, you know, our skill set is quite broad. Um, it crosses multiple disciplines of filmmaking, of the filmmaking process. Um, but, um, but yeah, again, ultimately, it's it's you know, the shorthand is to make it look good. You know, make it look, yeah. make it look uh, com either accurate, make it look compelling, or uh, or make it look awesome. You yeah, know? it's really fun when I get to uh, when I'm hanging out with with high school or college students and I'm talking about something like compositing and I'll either show them a breakdown or I'll explain like, hey, most of the car commercials on television today are, are, are VFX. Um, right. So and, and their jaws drop. They're like, oh, you know, so I think they don't people don't realize just how much we're looking at composite compositing when we're watching a yeah. feature or a television right. show. Um, and so much of it seems to revolve around uh, the suspension of disbelief. If you're doing your yeah. job well, you're right. really doing that movie magic where either it's so fantastical that the audience is captivated and not right. thinking that it's not possible, or they're right. looking at something that just assume it exists in the real world. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of our work is that seamless effects of making mm -hmm. stuff magically feel just right, you know, or, yeah. or, 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 or it can be the other end of the spectrum where it's, you know, you know, it would never come together in any other way. That's yeah. my, that's exactly. My Absolutely. Yeah, so I, 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, and so, I mean, yeah, you're right. You would, you'd be shocked to see the amount of effects in, in, in composite work done in most, uh, in most pipelines, in most projects, whether your standard issue, uh, romantic comedy to the most over the top sci-fi project, um, you'd be surprised. Uh, we, we, we help cinematographers in some of their, in some of their goals. And I'll have conversations with the creative crew in, that, in this regard production designers like okay this is great this is how far i can take it yeah how, how can we take this how can we take this further makeup for people on set you know it's like okay this is my physical prosthetic and making this this alien creature i can't really effectively do eye, eye nuances or whatever so we're really just touching every piece of the filmic pipeline and sharing with other creative artists and kind of you know ideally lifting the game all uh, globally uh you know across the board so it's, it's it is crazy i mean like you know physical uh, makeup uh, special effects i mean the, the you know the guys blowing up stuff and you know practical effects and oh, yeah. you know, all that stuff and part of my conversations on up and coming projects are is are, are just that it's just like okay wind is going to take us this far you know where can I pick it up in terms of composite to take it to the next level? Mm -hmm. um, um, production design, you know, we can build out this set to this point in time. What happens if we hand off to a, a digital version of it? Because, you know, we can't burn down this building or, you know, we can't, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, although many filmmakers will love to, and, you know, we can't destroy this building or we have to have it more, you know, more damage, more, you know, pushed further than, than production design can, can have. So it's, 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 you know, it's great because it is very multi, multiple, uh, across multiple disciplines. And we get to work in a very, you know, the one thing about this is it's probably the most collaborative art form that yeah. ever existed. You know, it's, so it's like, it's not you as the auteur artist. It's, it's yeah. it, lean upon that as your skill set and your strength, but you're really working with a whole world of artists. So the whole Nomen experience and the whole idea of peers and, and working with other, other students and, you know, gleaning from their greatness, their strengths, and kind of seeing what they have to offer is great because, and it's a great skill set. It's something that you're going to rely on in the future, you know, hugely if you go into games, media, filmmaking, et cetera, yeah. because everyone's going to have some, you know, something they're, they're going to bring to the table. And, it's good. and it, uh, ideally it's all awesome. And everyone mm -hmm. works together. Everyone really focuses on, you know, the artistic creative goal and not as much of like the nuances of, you know, getting, you know, goofy stuff done. Um, and you, you get a much better cohesive whole and uh, amazing art. Yeah. Um, and I know that we've got a screen share. You've got your screen shared and I think you've got some stuff that you wanted to share with us today. Is that right? Oh, um, yeah, a little bit. I'll just, okay. uh, I mean, so, I mean, I've done a, a little bit of everything. I've kind of go back, you know, again, a, a big picture I go from, back from old school lighting and shooting on set. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of at a point where I fell into visual effects because of model miniatures. So lighting and shooting model miniatures. So Con oh, Air. That is, I'm sorry, that's so cool. It also just filming model <laughs> miniatures. I mean, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't yeah. have Blade Runner. We wouldn't have Star Wars. We wouldn't have a lot of the Lord of the Rings without model miniatures, super cool stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so I mean, a lot of that, you know. So I, I come from that background of lighting and shooting, where and it's weird, weird because you know, with you, you could you, you could go on a set and physically build it and kind of see what. And but it's 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 funny because the similarities are still there. Like the whole idea of a breakdown or multi-pass renders. You know, we were kind of doing right. it in the analog miniature days. So like. You would do a lights only pass. You would do an atmospheric pass. You know, of like a volumetric fog pass. You know, as a model miniature repeatable motion control pass. Mm -hmm. And we would pop it together the same way that we do. You know, things with multi pass CG now. It's it's still the the same the same kind of methodology. So it's I find it you know very interesting because a lot of these things are sh shared the same common creative goals. You know, and mm -hmm. like the same same realities or same techniques that we would go together to put stuff together. But, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll draw a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of real from, uh, some, some projects I supervise and sure thing. Yeah, while you're getting that ready, we've had some questions come in from the chat. So I think I can, I'll bring one of them up right now. Uh, sure. and I know this can't, this is, there could be a complex answer to this question. So feel free just to choose one aspect. 
Um, sure. But uh, one of the questions is, how did you gain the ability to truly convey realism in your work? Like small and specific details can go a long way. Is there anything else you'd suggest or recommend when going for photorealism? Um, yeah, I think reference is invaluable. I mean, like like I kind of mentioned, you know, look look at reality, but you know, look at what else. I mean, go out and shoot something. Like if your goal is, you know, I wish there's you know a good example. Um, let's just say it's a, a a CG like your your car example, a CG car on an, mm -hmm. an environment on a background street plate. And I'll, you know, I'll be sitting in traffic in Los Angeles and I'll be looking at cars in front of me and really going like on a foggy day, like we had this morning, this is what shadows look like. And this is mm -hmm. kind of the weird skill set that you'll, you know, hone in on and say that, hey, you know, look how soft and diffuse these shadows are, but look how blocked up the occlusion is when it makes contact with the road, you know, and like completely different from a full, you know, sunny day. And you just really hyper focus in on that level of detail of, of reality around you as reference and or even photographic references of things that have been, been done or done before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, looking and seeing and perceiving and then repurposing and calculating or have that as part of your, you know, your skill set or your focus moving forward is, is usually a good place to go. And then again, like, so there are cases where that breaks down. It's like, okay, no one's ever seen this before, you know, and you're like, okay, now what you know um now where do we go I like the the two-headed girl uh for uh american horror story mm -hmm. so you know there's there's times where you're like okay i'm working on the the 5000th monitor insert and this is great this is my career and then something comes across your desk where it's like yeah there's this thing and we're gonna do it it's a two-headed girl and it's a it's a single performance you know blended together twice and I don't think anyone's ever done it before. Oh yeah, and it's episodic, so it's due by Friday. So go, <laughs> and you're just like, wait, yeah. what? You want right. us to do what? And it's just, and so like, there are so there are cases where you're like, I don't know how to proceed, or I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure. Because there's not a lot of reference for you know this this reality, and and that, you know, in that case, it was again terribly difficult, very stressful. Um, mm -hmm. But, but it worked out fantastically because it was a matter of like, um, it was like, okay, focus and figure out techniques and everyone kind of bounced ideas off each other. Like, you know, and it became very technical and nuanced, but it also was very, very much more of a performance-based thing. Like, um, oh, yeah. so it was like the nuts and bolts of things that we teach in class of like, tracking stabilization warping uh morphing and transitioning from one you know from one status to, to another like all that hardcore stuff that you're going to be exposed to in your you know basic levels of compositing but then it becomes a, a matter of nuance it's like okay these two blended characters together one breeze and which one is the driving force you know yeah. so came this like obsession of performance and it was like and as we know like this you know the kind of we're, we're teetering on this visual reality of like the human digital face you know and how how that works and like how complicated is that and you're like okay it's a face whatever it's just a form but the nuances of animation and expression and body jiggle and muscle twitches and and you know how things come you know how things are rigged and nuanced to to squeeze together and to relax like that is a whole landscape of of reality and nuance that is like that people just are like when you really deep dive into it it's like oh my god there's so much there's yeah. so much going on there's so much going on there and it's just like so uh, you know with us on that in that case it was like taking two performances and like really blending it together and then figuring out which kind of drove the other is it the a side the b side of this you know uh performance so yeah and you know is it was uh you know hugely challenging it was technically challenging it was performance driven it was also like you know you know which one is yeah it was it was also really getting into performance it was really like yeah. obsessing about how um or, our actress performed two, two different performances and which one became the lead, which one is more dominant. And so it was an interesting skill set. It was definitely something you'd never done before and, and definitely stretched a, a new and different, you know, thought process of how to, how to get there, you know? So that was, yeah. that was an interesting one. Yeah. I, that's one of the things that I, I, 
I'm not a VFX artist myself. I'm not, I'm not doing compositing stuff like that. But when I watch others work, I think that's one of the things that I am constantly hyped about, which is this idea of like, yeah, there, there's that certain percentage of job that's, that's repetition, but then these VFX artists, they're really, it's not like they just are changing plugins <laughs> to come up with something new. You're literally right. building something new from scratch and coming up with a new way of doing something just like they did in Star Wars, you know, with motion control and, and those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I think that was, I mean, and you are going to get to that point. I think that this cycle has repeated itself with, uh, with, um, you know, kind of looking up some of, of these, you know, the, the faces and kind of reliving that for a little bit, but we're really, we're really reliving that with this, this nexus of virtual production because totally. it becomes this like, you know, I'm really good at camera technologies, or I'm really good at uh, uh, our tracking technologies, or I'm really good at, you know, moving data from one from one server to the for, to the next. And like, mm -hmm. and, and and luckily, it's been this kind of you know, egalitarian. Like, this is what I this is what I know. This is what I know. Let's get together in a in a in an easily co cohesive way and kind of bring bring again what we have to the table and what, how this works. You know, how yeah. fast you know. The game engine could be a great hub. It's a good, it's a good sandbox for everything to come together, and be able to work together. But, uh, but there's so many different disciplines that come into that world now of you know of what we're bringing in terms of optimization of models and how they perform in there and like real time effects and how they per perform it in that game engine and like the technical aspects of camera lenses and how fast. Um, you know and how precise it registers an led screen and so it's this you know and really it is another rebuilding another uh another paradigm shift of technology where it's like everyone has to throw their 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 expertise into the ring and hopefully yeah. you know we we come through this in a new greater understanding of a greater tool set you know so it's interesting it's a you know because we have these moments of like how would you go about doing a model miniature motion control how would you go about creating a digital human face and all these different, you know, like challenges. And, and a lot of times it's like, I'm not quite sure. And people just have to R and D and test things. And really, I mean, as I'm getting more and more into some of this virtual production and we will be doing some, you know, very traditional and make a lot of sense, you know, bus gimbal background, people would be killed if we did it traditionally <laughs> kind of methodologies <laughs> for virtual production uh, on this up and coming project. So it is something that we're going to be exploring and digging into, you know, quite actively again, but it becomes, uh, you know, what are the best ways to achieve this, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's always, it, it's interesting because it is, there are always these challenges and there are always these things of where, you know, you're going to do a lot of repetitive things. You're going to do a lot of, you know, things that are, that would just make sense. And there are going to be times where, all those rules get thrown out the window because we're doing some something completely different. Yeah, know? absolutely. Um, now, I, before we take some time to get to more of the questions that are coming from the chat, um, sure. could you take a few minutes and talk to us a little bit about your the if, being in the classroom with you at Nomen? Uh, talk to us a little bit about what you do with your students, what someone could expect taking a class with you. Sure. I mean, so I, you know, I come to it. You know, like if you kind of deconstruct it, and I, again, coming to it for myself, you know, uh, there wasn't a nomen when when we started. You know, so we had to kind of figure it out. We had to go home with manuals and sleep by them through osmosis, read them <laughs> until we passed that out, until to to glean this information. Um, but um, but no, I think uh, and so I think a school like Nomen is fantastic. I mean, I, I went to a film school and I learned a lot and I, I, I kind of, you know, gleaned a lot from all my peers in the experience. I think for us, I, I really focus on, you know, what are the core basics of what you're going to need, you know, and I think compositing is one of those skill sets in visual effects that does build kind of on a Danielson kind of way from from the ground level up is like why am I doing these you know basic you know paint obsession about detail of you know a dust bust or kind of you know or a roto and the quality of an edge and you know why are you hounding these little details you know they're kind of trivial and stuff but they're not you know they kind of build they're these building blocks these 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 foundational bricks that you're building a, a greater sk skill set upon and it all really focuses down on you know those basic core ideas you know so it's honing your eye it's like you know what you know what what is wrong with this image and that's one of the, you know to the point where you're 
you're calculating, you're seeing stuff move and like that doesn't feel right. And, you know, so you're, it's, it's honing your eye. It's in some students, you know, it's great. Cause I'll, I see that they get it, you know, and I'll, they have the eye and they have that, that perception and they can see, you know, what works, what looks well, what looks great and what, what needs to be changed. Like all these things, you know, really factor into it, but our, our experience, you know, we'll, we'll, one engage and have fun. You know, you gotta, you gotta want to do it. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta bring, you gotta bring them in. You got, you gotta have uh, a good time with it. I think that's a part of it, but I think it's all core foundation. It's all traditional hardcore tracking, paint, roto, keying, you know, understand color. And it's not like, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll bring it at, to them. It's like, there's creative color. And then there's the technical colors. There's, there's some tech, there's a lot of color and math, evil math that we have to get under, uh, under our belts to, to understand what, you know, what part of the image I'm affecting and how I'm affecting it mathematically and, and what, in what ranges can I have this image, you know? So there is some technical boundaries. There's a lot of creative boundaries. So I think we start off with a, a, a basic solid core foundation and build upon that, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think, and I think, like what is it? They they said you know, our, the job of an educator is to to show uh, to show people a way a new way of of learning and and think of seeing things. You know, I think that's that's a huge part of it. I the teachers I had who were a great influence to me were were asking me the same questions. It's like you know, mm -hmm. hey, your shadow with just a, a dark black. You know, it's like what you know? Do, is there any color in that? Is there any color in that shadow? Yeah. You know? And then you're like, I, I don't, I don't quite see it yet. And I, you know, they'll throw things at you of like, you know, and they'll throw it back to you of like, I don't get it or I'm not quite seeing it, but then focus again, look at it again and, and mm -hmm. really look at it and kind of see what you're not seeing. And so that's, that's a huge part of it too, you know, um, letting them kind of, uh, grow and get, get better with the artistry, but also, you know, it's, it's about seeing, it's about seeing what works. It's about perceiving you know, the world around you, uh, and what you're trying to, what you're trying to target. And, you know, again, how do, how do you make that image better? Yeah. Well, and so, you're really driving the point too, I think also of how much, no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing right. something that's perceived as technical or you're putting paint on a physical canvas, the foundational principles of observation and light yeah. and color, all of that is going to be true across the board, uh, no matter what, what medium you're working in. Um, yep, absolutely. And, I think one of the things also that's that you're helping to parse out for us too is, you know, coming being in your classroom at Noman, it's not like you're just teaching technical skill. Like you're not like just saying, here is the software used for compositing. This is how to it's use the, the button. software. The yeah. Button Before we get into any of that, we're literally teaching people how to be artists for that medium. Um, and yeah. I think that's what really makes a difference. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. And I, you know, I get this question. I got, I've got that question before. I'm like, mm -hmm. you come from this weird, like set, you know, set lighting and shooting background. Did you hide, did you find it difficult to jump into this whole world of digital compositing and everything? And the mm -hmm. answer is not really, it's, it's completely the same skill set. You know, it's, you're drawing upon all the same things you learn lighting and shooting from a set, you know, uh, and, and how that translates into lighting and lighting a, and comping uh, characters in a world, you know, um, mm -hmm. camera movement, all that stuff. So, so yes. And, you know, it, it, it is really just that basic artistry of like, uh, of understanding it. So, you know, the media's change and I've kind of, you know, you'll learn several packages over, over time. You'll learn, you know, you know, you'll evolve your skill sets and you'll go, okay, you know, one package I've, I've learned it. It's like, I don't have to learn anything else. It's like, no, you're constantly learning. You know? Wishful and thinking. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Yeah. It's, it's always evolving. And, you know, I've kind of grown over multiple different compositing packages and, you know, I've lit in, you know, Maya and Katana and, you know, it's like, okay, well, cool. There's, there's now, how would you light in unreal? You know? So it's a, it's always, um, it's always a moving target, you know, and everything kind mm -hmm. of evolves, you know, we're, you know, to, to that, you know, it's, it's always a matter of evolution. It's just, but the things that are, are holistic, the things that are core to your skill set is your artistry. Like what, what do you know looks good? What works well? How in really like, I know what I want to achieve. How do I get there? Yeah. So yeah, well, and, you know, and yeah, that's why we go to school too. It's not just to learn what we're learning while we're there, but it's to learn how to learn how to be an effective yeah. learner, how to continue to learn even after you finish the program. 
Um, yeah, yeah. So we had, we've had some great uh, questions come in through the chat, and I want to make sure that we can devote some time to them. Um, sure. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, let's see. Um, we've had, uh, I'm going to consolidate some of the questions that have come in on this subject. Uh, sure. And I'm going to say, you know, let's say, you know, you talked about how you were sort of Gen 1 Star Wars, you know, and I, I was too, and that was a big inspiration. And, you know, we were seeing things that were very analog, but had never been done before create an entirely new medium of storytelling. Um, let's take the same kind of story, but fast forward to present day. Say we've got young artists out there that are seeing digital uh, production, virtual production, um, right. and they're, they're seeing all of these new uh, things that are just breaking onto the scene right now, but that's their gen one. That's what they're inspired by, and they want right. to get into that world. Um, what would what would be um, some things that you might recommend that um, some of these artists start looking at or studying or paying attention to in their skill sets? Well, I think, you know, I think it becomes a little bit easier because the information is flowing at a much faster rate than, than before, before the internet's happened. Sure, uh, there, yeah. was books, there was books, right? So, mm -hmm. so at least you're probably exposed to a lot of conversations about this and like what some people would find boring about tech, tech manuals or presentations. I mean, the, so the, the good news is a lot of, there's a lot of people sharing information experiences with us. So there is conversations like we're having now that mm -hmm. are talking about technologies and talking about artistry um, it, all the time, all over the world. And, you know, this is to the benefit of Noman doing it. It's there's, there's other people having similar, similar conversations about technology as well. And it's, it's good because you can follow it and all, you know, and you, you kind of just focus on, you know, that, get into that realm you know so ultimately you you start off by like getting in and start working at the ground level and working with the people who are doing that thing you know mm -hmm. I, it, D doug smith so i'll go back here uh one of the supervisors i started with was with douglas smith who uh who you know you'll see pictures of him with a light meter at age 19 in front of the millennium falcon and it's like oh my god nerd out you know but that's <laughs> not working with that dude he's yeah. right next to me he's my supervisor you know and and he'll tell you it's like i i barely knew what i was doing i got in because my brother got in and i was sweeping the floor at ilm and like and then they came in to shoot the cinefx picture and i just took the light meter and i took it and stuff and he just got in the system you know he got in the system he started learning at the ground level so as much as you can you know the advantage of being in, in a net, pure network of, at Nomen of just people who are doing it and people who are learning about it. And I, I think, you know, it's, what, it's like one of those, it, one of those things that you can experience in any culture where uh, get in a group, get in a nerd pack of people who are doing it, you know, even, even just talking about it, learning, yeah. learning about it, you know, sharing information about it. And I mean, that's the, the, you know, once you get through that whole experience and once you, grow that level of peers, you know, that I think the next big thing is starting that first job, you know, getting into a group mm -hmm. with people who are actually doing it, even if they're not doing it at a big level, even if they're kind of building out and kind of experience it, because this is all brand, you know, virtual production specifically is fairly new. Mm -hmm. So I think one good silver lining that came out of the COVID uh, situation was that people had some locked down time and they had some time. So, I mean, I know I went in and was dealing with people who were doing real, you know, real time mocap, face cap, and and virtual production technologies, and 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 did and started working in it as much as I could. You know, it, there wasn't, and we, and we were just experimenting with things. We were just testing these things. So, it, it, it is. It just became a matter of you know, you get it, you know, get into it, you know, as much as you could. Like yeah. it, for me, I think it was. It, our generation was probably harder. There wasn't as much, you know. A constant flow of information or, you know, you had to really search out worlds of different play locations that were doing stuff and kind of go to that and that Mecca. But I think, you know, it's becoming a lot more egalitarian. It's becoming a lot more uh, diffuse in terms of the information flowing and kind of people talking about how you go about things and what, you know, successes, uh, failures, you know, evolutions of technology. It's, it's all out mm -hmm. there. There are groups again. There, you know, there are groups that you're going to learn from. And again, like I'm really, I'm always taken aback about how much Noman becomes like a, uh, almost like a, a an Xavier Academy of like, oh my God, there's such a diversity of all these different people yeah. with all these different amazing magical mutant skill sets. And you're like, mm -hmm. this is a, this the the this group of people are going to be amazing. And you're just you know you're really always shocked at seeing how they evolve and how they take on the world of, of media and games and everything. I, I knew them when, you know, it's, it's a really, it's really great to see. I got to say, 
yeah, yeah as an educator it's one of the one of the better benefits of like seeing like this pack of young you know minds and creative talent just explode upon the world and all their all their great mutant skill sets uh, of i love history. that analogy that's a great analogy yeah, i it, it, yeah. it is so true it really is so because it's not yeah. like we're just everybody who comes through Doman is the same everybody is incredibly different and has their own unique you know mutant power but yep. like they don't fully realize it until they get with this other student or these other group yeah, of people totally. that have their abilities um and i i can't echo enough what you said earlier about just f it even if you find just one other person from your tribe yeah. and spend time yeah. with them i mean my art improved exponentially as soon as i found a community of other artists to be a part of um yeah. and you know school's a great place for that absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I got another question returning kind of to the subject of photorealism, but also the artistry. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to paraphrase the question because uh, I kind of want to I want to make it a little bit more broadly applicable. But when you're dealing with the idea of photorealism and you've got to look at that reference and get all of the details, <clears throat> just like in a painting, sometimes too much detail distracts. So how do you find that balance when you're you're literally trying to make something that the audience thinks they're looking at something shot in camera in the real world, but you're still designing the 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 visual that's coming across? How do you find that balance between detail but not too much detail? Well, I mean, if you if you take the time, well, history is also another good teacher, and if you go and take the time to kind of dig up and see, you know. I was lucky enough to be like next to or see like on stage, a lot of the original map paintings for, you know, um, oh God, like some, you know, early uh, Schwarzenegger movies, like uh, total mm. recall oh, like, yeah. and like Rocco Pia stories, like, uh, you know, map paintings and, and, and the original blade runner map paintings that were, you know, and, and gallery openings. And you're like, all right, let me go, let me go check this out, you know, and be, when, you know, literally paint on a glass or different techniques. And you're like, wow, cool. You know, let me go check it out. And, and you really are shocked with like the, the painterly qualities and, 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 and techniques and cheats of like, you know, yeah. what do I, see, what do I not see? Uh, you know, and the lack of detail, almost like it harkens back to, um, you know, paint, paint, uh, it's paint 101. It's just like, you know, show me what's important. You know, if you mm -hmm. if you look at a late a late stage Rembrandt, you're like, this is abstract art. You walk up close enough to it, and you're like, I'm just looking at crazy, mm -hmm. crazy kinetic blobs. But you step back and look at it, and it's like, no, he just wants me to focus on the glints of the eyes and how light rolls upon yes. you know the, across the nose and stuff like that. And it's like, but no, as you get up at a certain level, it's like the focus is, you know, completely obscure. But then in, in context of how it's going to be used, and that's where compositing comes back to it. It's like it only exists in this comp, and this is what I'm showing the audience. Nothing else matters, right? This is the mm -hmm. vantage point that you – now, the things are changing where, like, AR and VR and all that. But in the world of comp, I'm presenting this. This is what the audience gets to see. You know, so um, there are those those traditional art skills do come into play of like, you know, we want to push this down. I want to bring this up and kind of you know draw attention to a certain aspect of, of something and, and darken down something else and focus. Yeah. So it's 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 lighting, color, contrast. It's it's level of focus and blur. Like, how does it you know, sometimes it's too sharp tone, sometimes it's too uh, soft. Uh, so all that stuff kind of comes into play. Yeah. Uh, again, it's so much about artistry. Even if you're dealing, yeah, exactly. even if you're dealing with software, you're dealing with with pre-shot images and stuff like that. And I love, you know, I'm reading between the lines of your answer a little bit too. I heard something really cool, and that is, um, you know, at the dawn of digital production, uh, at the or even at the dawn of like a lot of the original compositing for the kind of productions yeah. you talked about. Um, the only art history you had was sort of the traditional old school art history. The cool yeah. thing about today and what I'm hearing you saying is like there is a whole art history that you can study behind film production. You can go look at matte paintings. You can yeah. you and now you can go on YouTube and see VFX breakdowns for some of your favorite films and see how they did it. Right. Um, right. And I think it's a reminder that all of that is art history too. And there's a lot right. more to be studied. There's a lot more giants that we can stand on the shoulders of uh, yeah. when we're looking to get into this world. 
That's yeah, really no, amazing. absolutely. No, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, we are a relatively new flavor of artistry, you know, but there is a history to kind of pay attention to. And it does harken back or like it, it does circle back into things we're doing contemporarily now, you know, with oh, yeah. commercial brands as well. So, you know, history awesome. repeats itself. And again, like, I think, I think we're both taking on the same idea that the art, the artistry of the, is the universal, what, 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 however it's applied or how the technical challenge presents itself is the, the new and different challenge. Yeah. I, I want to, I've got time for one more question because I also want to be respectful of your time. Um, and it's, this is a good one because I think this is a great question that's representative of somebody sort of looking sure. in to the industry and thinking of themselves, trying to visualize themselves in that. Uh, they're asking um, how many young specialists are there in the industry? It seems, uh, and I guess what they're saying, it seems from what they're seeing that it's mostly uh, adults or people who are a bit further along um, in their experience. So where are you seeing the younger ones? Like how, how the young, how the younger generation fits into it kind of. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like maybe I, if, if the person asked the question doesn't mind if I tweak it a little bit, uh, let's talk about, you know, junior artists. What's that sort of junior artist position wanting to get to work within VFX? Yeah, I mean, I you know, whether you're junior or senior, I think ultimately if you start out with your focus and your passion, you know, there's there's, mm -hmm. uh, there's getting into a system, and I think that's the la the last level of like uh, focusing on what your skill set is. You know, is like getting into that system at a at a at a ground level or getting into it. I think, you know, with with your artistry, I think. The advantage and really the 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 hardcore focus of Nomen, I think, is think of yourself as your fine as your as your presentation of an art. You know, you your reel is is your entree into the world, and you really want to mm -hmm. share. You really want to be excited about it. You really want to be you know something that's passionate about. But there's also that like uh, you know present present things you know that are needed. So there's also a business aspect about it. So it's like you know yeah. You know, if I'm a if I'm sitting at a company and like what what are the types of work I need to get done to 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 make it a viable business to keep the doors open to, to power the lights and get the software and the hardware going, you want to really you want to you know so you want to be able to present something that is, um, uh, you know something that makes a lot of sense something that that is done all the time whether it's a fix it or a removal you know things that don't go right things that are, need to be added in post like you know monitor inserts etc. Um, you know, cell phone inserts, uh, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, you know, all that stuff that we see all the time, it's always there. So I usually recommend, you know, students, you know, focus on some of that core stuff because that's what's going to get, get get you in the door. You know, the, you know, like, this person can do that, great. Then wow them, then follow your passion, then show them what, okay, okay, there's the basic stuff I'm cool with, mm -hmm. but I really love – I really love dragons. I really love, you know, cute characters and that kind of stuff. You know, embrace that, focus on, uh, focus upon that, and really present that as one of your cohesive whole. You know, to kind of get to to wow people with your reel. So, um, yeah. you know, juniors. I mean, realistically, I, it, it's really hard to say because, and I'm not gonna, you know, blow. Uh, you know, blow the toot the horn of Nomen, but you know, we know that some of our students are just get you know, recruited to the top level of, of, of companies right out of the gate. And really, you know, some people have an artistry skill set and a, mat a mature nature and just, you know, are they just get it that well enough that they can be, that they're going to be really solicited and, 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 you know, fought after because they're awesome. They get, and there's a great artistry with it. Now, I mean, yourself as an artist, and I probably fall into the latter category. It's like, you know, I can do a lot of this stuff, but I have to work at it. I feel like I really have to work at it to get good at it. You know, so I really have mm -hmm. to dedicate that focus and, and, and spend the hours and time to get it done. And you, you as a young artist may fall in that same category of like, you know, um, spending the time, putting that 10,000 hours in there to get, to get that, to, to make yourself better. Or, and there certainly is some things that you just get. There's some things that are just innate about you as an artist. Yeah. So um, don't look down upon or don't be like, oh, you know, how, you know, this is stressful. How do I, you know, how do I get into it? But there, there's going to be, there's so many opportunities. And like, really, I'm hearing that very same thing about compositing. I'll, I'll harken back to that. It's just a matter of, you know, there is demand. There is still a yeah. lot of demand. Uh, and, and, you know, comp is one of those, Compositing is one of those unique skill sets that 
you really do have to have a good eye for it. And I think that's, you know, people can go through the more technical stuff about it and get it and be good basic. And that's, there's, there's certainly an entree in that point as well. Mm -hmm. of like, I, you know, I do like the basic core stuff and, and, and then I grow my eye. There's always like that. There is always that learning and reckoning of like, you know, you're, Oh, you know, you look at, you're listening to notes and you're, you're doing reviews and you're like, wow, they, 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 they caught that one thing that I didn't see. That's really good. You know? And, yeah. and like, you know, why did I see that? And let me focus on that too. So you'll learn in this whole process too, even as a young artist, getting it, getting your foot in the door, getting, you know, getting your start in the business, just being in the process and just hearing from others, just seeing how they see, you know, again, ta talking back to you, like your, your perception as an artist and kind of picking up on what other people see that is good or bad mm -hmm. or whatever is upon that can be improved. Um, that really steps up your skill set as well. It's like anything else. Like that, you know, you're working your group. You know, when you're doing critiques and reviews, you know, you might think that's like, oh, okay, this is something you have to do. It's like, no, it's really, it's part of the a more more important educational process. You know, that you're going through of, of teaching your own self what what works for yourself, what works with the other other artistry, and you know, if you're supervising, you know what what you want to you know what you want to get from your artist and what you want to push them towards and, and how to make better imagery and, and successful visual effects. Yeah. So, yeah. And so don't, thank don't, you don't so start much. starting at the ground, ground level because like, that's <laughs> really where you're going to be exposed to a lot and you're going to learn a lot um, from others from, and I think the, I think the one, one of the better things about this, I'll, well, cl I'll close out with is just mm -hmm. that, you know, on, in so many ways, it's about sharing of information. So, you know, sharing of, you know, what, what works, what doesn't work, you know, um, learning from other, from others, how they approach things, how they see things, how they, how they make things look better, you know, yeah. on how they yeah. go about that. And, and, and a lot of times I think the greatest thing, even beyond the educational process that we present, you know, in the workplace too, people will share that information of like, maybe think about trying it this way, you know, and kind of give you, a hint on a roadmap. Now, there's a lot of ways to get there, but you know they're giving you a, some feedback. So, you know, be humble, take that, take that, and run with it, and see if it gets you to your creative goal. You know, so there's yeah. a lot of that in the business, and hopefully, it, it continues in that way. Because yeah, I couldn't agree good. more. Um, you know, for for myself, I remember my first gig that I was so excited about was a very humble gig. You know, doing props for a game that was in a style that wasn't even my style. You know, right. but I learned so much doing yeah. that, and I grew so much as an artist. Um, yeah, so that's you can't say enough about humble beginnings. Um, yeah, in just a couple minutes too, I'll you know I'll share about kind of what is different about choosing Nomen as a pathway for training, um, because it's definitely built around building a career, not just skills. Um, and it's designed, of course, to you. You can you could definitely break into the industry self-learned uh, Noman's founder Alex Alvarez will even even say that but I think the unique thing about Noman is we've built something that is a fast track um, and I'll actually be touching on a lot of the stuff that you've brought to the table today so yeah. wonderful to get to know you sir um, not only are you an incredible artist but uh, I'm definitely hearing and I'm sure our audience is that you're very passionate about being an educator helping artists grow helping people find their careers so really cool to be with you today thank you very much no, th thanks for having me. Yeah, no, I think re really, I think I think you'll probably hear this from a lot of instructors as well. I think we we benefit reciprocally as well of you know getting getting that feedback back or even just seeing things a different way. You know, as you present as you present ways of of seeing things, you're going to get a, some feedback as well, and you're going to you're going to see how people learn a different way, see a different way and, and what really clicks with them and, and respond well to that. So it's, yeah, it's a reciprocal process. Absolutely. Awesome. So well, everybody in the you. chat, please give your, your thanks and your love to Martin. Um, as we uh, transition to kind of the, the latter 15, 20 minutes uh, of our time today. But again, thank you very much, Martin, for being with us. And uh, yeah, cut, anybody that wants to take a class with Martin, go talk to Xander in the chat. Uh, listen to the presentations about to come up and I'll talk to you about how you can go about doing that. So yeah, thank you again. Uh, I'm gonna get ready for, uh, we'll see you later. Um, get ready to put my screen up here in just a moment. I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, I'd like to share with you guys very briefly, um, about 15 minutes or so, about uh, what makes Nomen unique as a place where you can learn to do 
not only was what Martin was talking with us about today, but the entire uh, digital production pipeline. Um, so just a bit of history for you guys. Nomen uh, first started in 1997. Uh, we started out as a place where artists from studios could come to learn these new digital uh, processes and this, this digital production technique and this pipeline that was developing at the time. Um, because there was such a high demand for that kind of knowledge and having a school, we were one of the first schools that ever offered that kind of training, we very rapidly grew into being a full-blown school with full-time programs. Um, we've won a lot of awards over the years, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, gotten some great uh, reviews and accolades from well-respected uh, companies and individuals in the industry. Um, and all of that's just to give you an idea that we've been around for over 20 years and we're very good at what we do. And because of that, um, our graduates are going on to work on really amazing projects. So just as a small sampling, uh, what you see on the screen right now, these are examples of projects that Noman alumni have worked on. So you're looking at some of just a few of the top games and films and productions that are out there today. Hopefully some of these are, are some of your favorites. I know they are mine. Um, and these are a lot of the studios out there that are regularly hiring uh, graduates from Nomen. Um, and these are just the, the um, kind of the usual suspects, a lot of the studios that people could name, but there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more. And there is a huge demand, just like Martin was saying earlier, there is a demand for artists with these skill sets. Um, you know, you see on the screen here, 97% industry placement. Uh, and then just, just last year, during the entire pandemic, this, this whole year that we went through, uh, still 94% of our graduates were being placed in the industry. Uh, and we've always maintained a placement rate of well up into the 90th percentile. Um, and what that means is that is the percentage of the graduates from our full-time program that are finding a job in a studio doing what they trained to do at Nomen within six months of finishing the program. So I'm emphasizing that because Nomen is not about just giving people skills and then sending you to go figure out how to turn that into a career. We are preparing you for a career. We want you to launch into your career as you finish our program. So what is it that we are teaching essentially? Uh, and you might have, if you're not familiar with this, you might have heard uh, me using this term with Martin, but essentially it's digital production. And that's just a catch all term to, that includes these uh, kinds of skill sets, stuff like computer based visual effects, character and creature design, digital sculpting, character and creature animation, environment design, matte painting and compositing. Compositing is what we were touching on today uh, with, with Martin and his career and what he teaches. Game asset creation, game engines, production workflows, and world building. All of those skills translate into these careers. And every one of these unique careers is a different step in the digital production pipeline. Um, so you can see there are a lot of different roles and roles that are very diverse, very different from each other. The cool thing about digital production is there is room for lots of different kinds of artists with different skills and different interests. So I wanna just show you a few examples of that. I'm gonna look at four of them starting with character artists. Now, a character artist does exactly what the name implies. You are actually creating the 3D character or creature that is what the audience is gonna see on screen uh, in a film or in a game. And this artist here is using a piece of software called ZBrush, which essentially allows you to digitally sculpt with like virtual 3D clay on your computer. Um, so it provides a medium in which you can make 3D digital models using traditional sculpting techniques, just like you're using clay. Um, and you can come up with some incredibly realistic and lifelike characters and creatures. These are artists, um, you know, character artists are people that are probably spending a lot of time drawing characters and creatures, have a lot of interest in things like character and creature design. Um, so if that's you, this actually could be a great uh, career for you um, in a studio. Next up, we're gonna talk about effects artists. And while there are many different types of you know, uh, roles for effects, um, specifically, you know, we we're talking about compositing with Martin, this we're looking at here is essentially a, a VFX animation. Um, so these are super complex scenes, as you can see. And because we're looking at sequences that have millions or billions of different moving pieces and particles, uh, you wouldn't be able to animate this like uh, you would do traditionally for a character. 
Instead, these are artists that are still thinking like animators. They're still thinking about a lot of the principles that we were talking about earlier today, but they are gonna use software that creates uh, simulations of real world physics. Um, and that's really cool. Um, I like to think of these artists as kind of like if they were a member of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, they would be the wizard. <laughs> They're the one that's kind of like figuring out how to make the magic and how to make it look real and uh, get it all to work. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, that could be a great uh, career path for you to choose. Uh, next up is compositing. Uh, we were talking at length with Martin about this. This is something he has a very uh, lengthy career in doing. Um, and the compositor, as he put together so eloquent, this is the person that brings it all together, like you're seeing here um, for this scene. They don't make all of the different assets that are being put together, but they're the ones that brings it together in a way that the audience isn't even thinking about whether or not it's real. They're just immersed in the story. So you can see here, it's a combination of, of green screen footage, digital models, the buildings and props in the foreground are 3D models with lighting and texturing. Um, and you know you animate it and put it all together into a sequence like this. And uh, this, for example, is an establishing shot from the film Wolf of Wall Street. And uh, compositors, as Martin said as well, are in high demand in the industry because um, now a director, if they have an idea of a place or an establishing shot or a location for their story, they aren't limited to just having to go and find that in the real world or find the approximation of it in a real location. Now they actually can save a tremendous amount of time and money and they can go to a VFX studio and say, hey, this is the location. This is kind of the, what we want it to look like. These are the designs for it. Now can you actually put together the footage that we filmed in camera, create the animation and, and uh, the different models we're gonna need to bring it all together like this. And the compositor is the person that puts that final, you bring it all together and put that final uh, sheen on it as it were that um, suspends disbelief and often the audience has no idea that they're looking at something that was generated um, in a computer. And lastly, we're gonna look at previs artists. Now, um, while compositing is more at the end of the digital production pipeline, the previs artist is all the way at the beginning. Um, this is an artist who essentially uses um, 3D models and 3D animation to create a moving storyboard for a film or, or for an animatic. Um, they are not spending uh, months and months getting everything perfect visually in high detail. Instead, they're using more simplified models and animation because their job is to get the big picture out there. These artists get to work very closely with the director of the film, as well as the cinematographer, um, to make sure that they get all the right beats and visuals for the story. Um, they are setting up the camera shots. They're setting up how, how the camera is going to pan and what kind of lenses are being used. Um, I like to say that, you know, uh, previous artists are sort of like a, um, a, a person that loves doing 3D animation, but is kind of like trapped in a director's body. Like they want to tell a story. They want to get the, the big idea across. So if that's you, again, this is another position that's in high demand in the industry and, and it could be something for you as well. So um, with those examples in mind um, and how different they are from each other, let's just um, talk really quickly about the different academic offerings at Noman. Um, so here you have a bird's eye uh, perspective and you can see that we have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in digital production that is training in the entire pipeline with a college degree. Um, additionally, we have something called a certificate program. This is more advanced and more intensive than the four-year degree. It's a little bit similar to the level of study uh, going after a master's degree or something like that. Um, we also have something called a foundation in art and design, which is a one-year uh, course that lets you build your portfolio at Noman. Uh, if you're wanting to build a portfolio, say to apply to one of our full-time programs. Um, and lastly, we offer many, many individual uh, courses um, at our school. So the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, um, this is fully accredited. It's full-time on our campus. Accreditation means that you know financial aid and some of those usual suspects that you could apply for to help pay for school, those are gonna be available. Um, we are very excited that you know in just a few weeks uh, we are going to be opening up our campus fully again for in-person classes uh, uh, for our full-time programs and individual classes. Um, so the Bachelor of uh, Fine Arts degree is no exception to that. Um, and this is going to get you in four years, you're going to become industry ready as, as a digital production artist. And you're also going to get some of those general ed classes and things that are going to be necessary for you to have 
a BFA degree um, as a result of that time in education. So you're getting a degree plus all the training you need to go and start working in the industry. In these four years, you're going to learn uh, what we would call a 3D generalist skill set. That means that you're literally uh, learning every step in the pipeline. So when I said earlier at the beginning of the conversation with Martin today, you don't have to know exactly what you want to do when you come to Noman because we're going to expose you to all of it. And then you get to zero in on what you discover that you're super passionate about. Uh, for example, in uh, the BFA program, you get to you can choose one of two optional concentrations. One would be game art, which is going to teach you the whole uh, pipeline for working within game engines for a game studio. Um, or you can choose a, a VFX concentration, which is going to bring some of the more advanced visual effects classes um, that are usually only available in the two-year program, give you access to those to build extra skills in that area. Um, or you could you know, not choose one of these optional concentrations, and you still have uh, four electives in your final four terms that you can pick that let you build up extra skills in a particular area of the pipeline that you really want to work in. What does that mean? It means that Noman graduates have a lot of skill in the area that they're passionate about, and that skill is built on a foundational understanding of the entire production pipeline. And that combo of skill sets is the reason why the vast majority of studios out there are looking for Noman graduates, because they know that they're getting a person that is passionate about what they do, but understands the big picture and how to work together with all of the other roles in the studio. Uh, next up, uh, the two-year certificate program. This also is fully accredited. It's going to be full-time on our campus. And it's a faster, more intense uh, program that's designed to build foundational 3D skills, just like in the, uh, uh, the BFA program. But then you're also going to get to choose one of five areas of emphasized study. These would be areas uh, like modeling and texturing um, or animation or um, games and so forth, uh, visual effects. Uh, so this is a more intense, more condensed version of the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, um, sans some of the uh, general ed classes that are going to be required for a degree. This is typically utilized by students who may already have a degree from another school, but want to come to Nilman for that hyper-focused, hyper-specific training to build their career off of. Next up, I uh, just want to mention briefly our foundation in art and design. We actually have a lot of students coming into Noman this fall who are going into our foundation in art and design uh, course. And that is because this is designed for artists who want to build their portfolio at Noman, learning from Noman instructors. Uh, unlike the full-time programs that I've already mentioned, the foundation does not require a uh, portfolio submission and uh, you know acceptance into the program. This is something you simply speak with our admissions advisors about uh, enrolling into the foundation. Um, and it's going to be up to a year of study. You're not required to stay in the foundation for the entire year. It's there for you to get in and get what you need. So you're going to be learning a range of foundational art skill sets from things like figure drawing and costume figure drawing to anatomy, perspective, color and light theory. And then you're also going to get into some great uh, entertainment design classes like character and creature design, uh, vehicle and mech design, environment design, and so forth. Um, so I think the reason why we have a lot, we're seeing a lot of younger artists go into this is it really lets them hone their skills, put together that foundation or, um, help them build out a super effective portfolio that they can, uh, use to apply to Nomen, um, or even to an entirely different type of art school. So if you're interested in the foundation, you can also talk with admissions about that as well. Now, all, uh, about over 70 of the classes that are a part of our full-time programs are also available as individual classes. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to take a standalone course um, in a particular area that you want to build skills in. Uh, our advisors also offer advice about taking an individual class. You can make sure you're getting started in the right class that matches your skill set. Um, but being in an individual class at Noman means it's the same class that our full-time students are in. So you'll be shoulder to shoulder with some of our full-time students, as well as some of the industry professionals that are coming through and taking these individual classes to continue to build their skills and career moving forward. So this is a great way to, to learn at Noman, to get a taste of what it's like to be at our school. Uh, no portfolio submission is required. This is just something you can sign up for online. But if you're looking for some input as to what class would be the best for you to start with, you could talk to one of our advisors about that. 
And speaking of uh, admissions advisors at Noman, um, here you can actually see my colleague Xander right here in this fantastic photo. Xander is in the chat to help you guys out, uh, learning more about Noman while I'm sharing. Um, but this is uh, Noman's admissions team. And these guys are awesome. And uh, we do things very differently at Noman than a lot of other art schools. Uh, the traditional art school experience often is the advisor's kind of the last person you talk to. They're like that gatekeeper that you sort of bring your work and you hand it to them and, and say, can I get into your school? And then they tell you whether or not you were accepted. At Noman, our admissions advisors are the first people you should be talking to. If you're thinking about coming to Noman, and then you've got all these questions about, well, what should be in my portfolio? Is my is my work good enough? Uh, what do I still need to learn? Uh, what about financial aid? What about this and that? Our advisors are there to be your coach and help you not only with your planning and understanding more about our programs, but they will also coach you in your artwork. They will give you portfolio coaching. So it's this great chance of not having to guess what Noman is looking for in a portfolio that you submit to a full-time program. You get to talk to these guys, they'll give you coaching, they'll offer you suggestions and help you build up that portfolio and make it as ready and targeted towards Noman as it can be. And I've known uh, these advisors sometimes to work with students up to a year going back and forth. That's entirely dependent on your willingness to communicate, communicate with them, follow direction and be self-motivated to work on these things. But um, We've had many, many students, you know, get admitted into our programs because they took the time to work with an advisor up front. Um, they're super nice people. Nothing scary about talking to them. If you want to get in touch with an advisor today, Xander will uh, drop a chat in or drop a link in the chat that will take you to some you could fill out that's going to get one of them uh, to email you. The Noman campus, which we showed a reel of, a really awesome video of the campus we showed right at the very beginning of the stream. As we were going live, if you didn't get to see that, I encourage you to go back and watch it, video on demand, whether you're seeing that on our, our YouTube channel or Twitch channel, we get to reopen campus fully again um, in October as we start up our fall term, and we are so happy about that. All nine of our digital labs, which have industry standard hardware, as well as all the software you're gonna need, these labs are open seven days a week um, from about nine o'clock in the morning to midnight uh, for our students to be working on their projects, but also be working in proximity to each other, building those relationships, learning from each other, all that stuff we were talking about earlier um, in the interview with Martin today. Um, so I definitely encourage you to watch that campus reel, but also to come out and take a tour of the Noman campus. As we open up the campus again, we're gonna start offering tours and uh, we wanna make sure that you have your opportunity uh, to come out and check out the campus um, when we have those tours available. So with that guys, uh, the last thing I'd like to invite you to do is to continue watching these streams. And when we start offering in-person events again on campus, come out to our events. If you wanna know about the industry, if you want to network, if you wanna hear about stuff that's happening in studios right now and meet these artists, Noman events are one of the best ways to do that. They're 100% free to the public. All you need to do is RSVP online to get a virtual ticket and show up on time. But these have been some great events, like you can see some examples here. Um, shortly before the pandemic hit and we all went into quarantine, one of our, li one of our last live events uh, was with all of the visual development artists from Marvel. And uh, these are artists like uh, Andy Park and Ryan Minerding who came out and shared their artwork on all of the films leading up to Avengers Game or, or Endgame and uh, talking about how they made it. We also, uh, in parallel to that event, open up an entire exhibit in our gallery of their artwork and some awesome prints. We currently have um, the uh, 2021 Noman Student Gallery on display uh, on campus. And if you follow us on social media, uh, you'll be able to get uh, the most up-to-date information about the next event that's starting and when you can come to campus uh, to be a part of them, whether that's a show in our gallery or an event on our stage and continue tuning into the Noman stream. We wanna continue doing live streams to resource you and provide you with the access and information that you're gonna to need to move forward as an artist. Uh, so with that guys, I wanna say thanks for tuning in today. Uh, thanks for everybody who joined in. Thank you for all of your fantastic questions in the chat. Sorry we couldn't get to them all, but um, you know whatever questions you have, you can definitely follow up with an advisor at Noman and they would be happy to help you out. Um, so once again, again, guys, I'm Adam Hartel. Happy to be your host here. Uh, stay creative, stay safe, and I hope to be able to see you on campus at Noman in the near future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.